Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another video, and I hope that you're all doing well. In the past, I've made two individual videos, one telling the origin of the Jedi and one telling the origin of the Sith, and I thought it might just be better to put both of them together into one video talking about the two largest and most important force religions in the galaxy. I hope you enjoy it. Over many millennia, the Jedi Order has undergone numerous changes, from the semi-organized band of wizards in ancient times to the highly disciplined warriors and peacekeepers of the Old Republic. Some changes have been gradual, implemented by the Jedi after much contemplation, while others came in quick response to unanticipated events and political upheavals. Despite such transformation, the most remarkable aspect of Jedi history is the fact that so many powerful beings chose not only to band together, but to use their powers in service to others as well. Jedi may share the ability to manipulate the Force, but it is through the Jedi Order that they are truly united. The Force is an energy field that binds together time, space, and living beings. Although predecessors of the early Jedi are often credited with identifying it, the Force has always existed, and the Jedi were not the first to utilize it as a source of power. Ancient history accounts for many beings who unwittingly discovered and demonstrated special abilities that indicate they were Force users or Force adepts. Although such beings have always been in the minority, it is believed that many more are at least Force-sensitive, meaning they have varying degrees of potential to become Force users. Approximately 30,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, a species known as the Rakata used the Force to power much of their technology, including starship engines that enabled them to travel through hyperspace. Relying upon information found in crumbling history disks, researchers have attempted to trace the Jedi back to several long-lost organizations, including the Mystic Order of Dai Bendu, the followers of Palawa at the legendary Chados Academy, or the Ashla worshippers of Tython. Although the Great Holocron sheds some light on the Tython-based organization, it seems that all that remains of the other groups is their names. Approximately 25,000 years before the Battle of Yavin, the development of hyperspace travel technology prompted many core worlds to form the Galactic Republic. According to the Great Holocron, the first society of Force-sensitive beings may have been founded on the Dawn world of Tython, where Force users harnessed a positive energy that they called the Ashla. This energy allowed them to telepathically communicate across vast distances, heighten their senses, heal themselves, and see past the veils of time. Eventually, they learned that this energy was not limited to Tython, but permeated the entire galaxy. It seems that it was these Force users or their descendants who eventually became known as the Jedi, warriors who obeyed the precepts of harmony, knowledge, serenity, and peace. The Tython Jedi came to recognize that the Force had two fundamental aspects, the light side, or Ashla, and the dark side that they called the Bogon. The light side of the Force was regarded as the essence of creation, balance, and growth that flowed naturally throughout the galaxy. The dark side was believed to be entirely selfish in nature, and embraced negative energy that made one simultaneously more isolated and more destructive. The Jedi required generations to master the Force, transforming what once had been regarded as wizardry into something of a science. After they learned that the Force was all-encompassing, they ventured to other worlds to recruit and train those with similar powers. Some Jedi chose the path of diplomacy, while others became experts at battle, respectfully distinguishing themselves as Jedi Consulars and Jedi Guardians. Those Jedi who served specific sectors of space became known as Jedi Watchmen. Through meditation and practice, the Jedi discovered that avoiding the emotions of hate, anger, and desire could make them grow more powerful in the light side of the Force. The ancient Jedi did not forbid intimate relations or marriage among their order, but it was understood that the strong emotions associated with such relationships could easily affect the decisions and behavior of most Jedi. 
The majority led monastic lives. Some legends claim that the first Jedi Knights traveled to the planet Kamas to learn proper moral judgment in an attempt to understand how to use their powers ethically. Study of the Force continued at the school of Jedi philosophy that was founded on Ossus after the Great Hyperspace War. Jedi students trained in the arts of combat, but also learned that patience, humility, and self-sacrifice were paths to enlightenment. As the Jedi became celebrated for their actions and achievements throughout Republic space, Jedi Masters remained ever mindful of the dark side. On Ossus, the Jedi came to understand that both the light side and dark side of the Force reflect aspects of the living Force, the in-the-moment manifestation of life energy, and the unifying Force, the cosmic expression of prophecies and destinies. In canon, this is known as the living Force and the cosmic Force, but in Legends, it's referred to as the Unifying Force. More precisely, these ancient Jedi realized that the light and dark sides are intertwined and necessary to each other, as they form a cosmic balance. A Jedi could avoid embracing the dark side, but could never ignore its power. Over the millennia, awareness of the Unifying Force became lost to the Jedi but it was rediscovered during the New Republic's war with the Yuuzhan Vong and Luke Skywalker's New Jedi Order. The Sith, an order of Force users that utilized the Dark Side. Formed from a splinter group of Dark Jedi that were exiled by the Republic, the Sith spent thousands of years developing their own philosophy of power. Their religious order went on to survive across galactic history. Each Dark Lord of the Sith, once thousands of them active at once, were all characterized by their lust for power and their desire to destroy their ancient enemies, the Jedi. The Sith grew to become the most infamous of Darksiders, and their lords were often revered as the pinnacle of Darkseid power. Throughout their long history, the Sith commanded several empires and engulfed the galaxy in multiple wars. The origin of the Sith Order itself is a fascinating one, beginning with the group known as the Exiles and their banishment from the Republic in 6900 BBY. But before I get started on them, I want to look at the Sith species. That's right, the Sith were originally just an alien species native to the planet Korriban. The red-skinned Sith were an incredibly Force-sensitive species, so much so that many believed their entire species was able to use the Force. The abundance of Force sensitivity among them was the result of a symbiotic relationship that their entire species maintained with the Dark Side of the Force on Korriban. They derived sustenance directly from the Dark Side, which fueled the Dark Side's power. Before the arrival of the Exiles, the Sith evolved into their own empire, ruled by their own kings. Now let's look at the Exiles, who were a group of 12 Dark Jedi that broke off from the Jedi Order. In 7000 BBY, some Jedi Knights left the Order to walk a darker path. They had begun delving into alternative uses for the Force, such as bending life to serve their purposes. These actions were a direct violation of the natural will of the Force, and the Jedi obviously had a big problem with what they were doing. The Dark Jedi created monstrous armies of alchemically altered beasts and soldiers, beginning the war known as the Hundred Year Darkness. The war lasted for ten decades, until finally the Dark Jedi were defeated at the Battle of Corbos. As punishment for their treason and unnatural atrocities, the twelve surviving Dark Jedi were exiled by the Republic forces. Because the Jedi did not wish to kill them, they instead loaded them onto a ship and sent it hurtling into the unknown regions of the galaxy. The group of twelve Dark Jedi became known as the Exiles, and they were guided by the Dark Side to the planet Korriban, where the Sith people greeted them. Shocked by their abilities and power within the Force, the Sith people named the Exiles the Gen Jedi, meaning Dark Jedi in the Sith language. The Exiles forged an alliance with the Sith rulers, before overthrowing their king and claiming dominion over all of the Sith people. They took the title Lords of the Sith, and their ruler came to be known as the Janari, or Dark Lord of the Sith. So this is actually amazing to me and I think it's very interesting because this is why they are called Sith Lords, because the original Dark Jedi ruled the Sith people. After becoming Lords of the Sith, 
some of the exiles were not satisfied with merely ruling the Sith people, and a group of them returned to Republic space to attack the Jedi. All this did was alert the Republic and the Jedi Order that some of the exiles had survived and taken control of an area of the galaxy called Sith Space. The exiles who remained on Korriban began using dark side alchemy to crossbreed with the Sith people, allowing their lineage and strength in the Force to continue. They formed the Sith Order and began the new Sith Empire, led by the Dark Lords instead of the King of the Sith people. Over time, the breeding of the Exiles and the Sith led to the two groups being indistinguishable from each other, and the Sith Empire thrived under the succession of the Dark Lords. So obviously after this there is thousands of years of history, but I really just wanted to break down the origin of the Sith Order. I think it's really an interesting backstory and I never knew about the Sith species until I started diving deeper into lore. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and may the force be with you.